Hello everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video. Well, it's here. It's the spooky season and so I thought today it would be a perfect time to do a little video about painting our friendly neighborhood skeletons. Today we're going to talk all about how to paint bone. Let's get into it. Uh, the strict technomancer that is Vincey V. Let us get to the technique and learn it Vincey V. Style. I'm painting up a uh, bone reaper for a buddy of mine. And I thought this would be a great chance to go through how I tackle bone on miniatures. Now, the first thing I'm going to say with this is the exact paints that I use here aren't really that important. It's more about the value progression. What I mean by that is how dark to how light. One of the things I often see done wrong with bone is people just paint it kind of something that says bone on the bottle, maybe then give it a wash and call it a day. The problem is that's not actually what bone looks like. Bone look is, is extremely varied in color because it's a near white color. And so that means it gets polluted very easily and has other sorts of tones that get caught up into it. So today we're going to explore that in a little more detail and we're going to paint up some really quality looking bone. And I'll show you in some places where you could make color swaps, uh, you know, depending on exactly what you want. Let's head over to the desk and let's get painting. All right, we're gonna start with a little bit of red gray from Pro Acryl. Now, right away, this is probably a lot darker than you might expect. Um, as this goes on, and especially as it dries, you're gonna see just how dark this looks. And you might think this is too dark for bone. So first things first with this, I'm going for a little bit colder of a palette of bone, okay? So hence, I'm gonna stick more into grays, but we will put a little bit of brown in later. Stick with me. If you want something a little more traditional, a little warmer, let's say you've got some skeletons in the desert, then instead your start here should be a light brown, okay? Something like a rust or a light rust or any kind of light brown tone. That's where we begin. Either way, today I'm starting here. Why red gray? Well, because it's dark, it has a little bit of brown tone to it, but it has a decent amount of red in that neutral tone. And the red, again, is we want to bring in hue. Regular, like, just to say black to white, gray, boring colors. Boring, 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 boring. So we want to inject hue into that wherever we can. And this gives us a great chance to work some red into the shadows of what will ultimately be a decently cold highlight you'll see as we get there. So, uh, once that's all down, which takes a while, because these guys are supremely annoying, as far as, the, that is to say, Bone Reapers, as far as all their little fiddly bits, we're then going to start proceeding up. My next step is a little buff from AK 3rd Gen. Now, this is a more traditional bone color, probably something more like you're used to. I begin by mixing it 50-50 with the red-gray, and I cover most of the miniature. Not all, most. I'm leaving some of this in the deeper recesses, and the lower facing areas, the planes that are pointing directly down, and so on. Um, as well as a little bit up top in that sort of piece that he's shaping. This, is, this ends up being a very fun thing to paint on camera, because I picked a great fig where he's holding this dumb thing right in front of his face the whole time, so I'm going to try to do most of this from the back of the model, where you have a clearer view of the, the bone. But at any rate, at this point, we're just doing simple layering. We're kind of building it up, focusing on the edges, focusing on the tops of surfaces, and even the sides of surfaces as well. Once that's done, I move to the pure buff, again, repeating the process. Now, if you haven't watched my video on layering, this is very much just an exercise in layering, so go check that out. But what I'm doing each time I move up the value spectrum here is cover less and less. All of my low tones, so the red, gray, and the buff, are intentionally quite warm. As I move up, everything is going to get colder. And that's because my, this, as you see from the miniature, the purple and the green are my other colors, and I've highlighted them fairly coldly. So I want to go ahead and continue that uh, general environmental tone. It just seemed more interesting. I don't know, something about Bone Reapers, they seem like they're more cold and dusty to me than like dry desert sand like Tomb Kings. I don't know. Your mileage may vary. That's just my take on it. Okay. 
With the buff layer done, covering less and less each time, I now bring in some ivory from Pro Acryl, and we're going to use both ivory and bright ivory. Um, two paints in Pro Acryl's line that are truly outstanding. Um, Pro Acryl makes just some of the best white paints in the market, and these are two of my absolute go-tos for many purposes. So yet again, I'm going to start with a 50-50 progression, begin layering that up, again covering a little less, focusing now more towards the tops, towards smaller spaces. We then move to pure ivory, then, uh, and I again repeat this layering process. There's nothing too complicated about what I'm doing here. I've lit this model from the top, and so the only place that's unusual that I want to call out is that breastplate thing he's forming on the front. There, because of the way it's shaped, the light is on the bottom where it's a sticky outy bit instead of at the top. Everywhere else on him, the volumes, I'm pushing the highlights toward where? The top and the sticky outy bits. Remember, that is our guideline, our key to highlighting anything. What's on, to, like if our life, we're do, assuming a standard lighting scheme of light above us, then where do we highlight? The top and the sticky outy bits, okay? So, uh, at any rate, I continue pushing light in that way, covering less and less each time, until eventually I get to pure um, bright ivory, and that's my sort of, well, will be my highest highlight of this progression. As I said, though, I want it to be a little cold. So my final step is I just take a little bit of green gray from AK 3rd Gen, mix it in with that bright ivory to get a very bright very cold white, and I just touch a few final areas on the tops of the, the very tippy top of some of those things, as well as some edge highlights. So that's how that comes out. Now, that's a lot of layering, but nonetheless, this is a character, right? So we're going to put a little extra time into it. Um, if this was, if I was doing this progression for like 40 more tech guard, I'd probably cut a few of those half steps out, wouldn't go as far. But with things like characters and central figures in the army, we want to spend a little more time. But where, and you could call it right here, and that would be perfectly fine. As I said, if you wanted this to be more warm, swap out that red gray for more of a brown tone, and you'll get a more traditional warm progression. But what it's now time to do is fix some of our layering. Like, what I mean by that is we still have some harder progressions. Even though this was relatively small, we've still got some progressions that have some layer lines in them. So what I do is I go back to some of my early tones, specifically the buff, as well as the red-gray, and I thin them down into a glaze. Uh, and what I'm going to do is glaze down toward the shadow. So remember, when we're glazing, it's better to use the lower tones in our progression. Those will glaze easier. So something like buff will glaze a lot easier than the ivory, and something like red-gray will glaze easier than buff. Generally, the darker you get, the easier it is to glaze. And so I mix up some thin versions, test them on the back of my hand, wick off my excess liquid in a paper towel before I apply the glaze, and then it's time. I have um, some great videos on glazing. You can check those out as well. Um, if you haven't watched those, or if it's a technique you struggle with. And I'm going to pull down. So I start in about the middle area. I don't cover the whole space. I start in about the middle area and pull down into the shadow, depositing the larger drop of paint, you know, the sort of most, down at the very bottom uh, in the deepest shadows, where, importantly, it will have the least effect. I then repeat this process with the red-gray. Now, as a point of fact, I will then come back with my lighter color, uh, specifically with the uh, bright ivory, and I will also glaze from sort of the middle up there, very lightly, very thin glaze. I do a couple of those. Once all those glazes are done, which just takes a few minutes because he's not ultimately that big, most of these finishing steps don't like don't take near as long as the initial sort of base coating and layering did. These are actually fast by comparison. Um, but once that's done, now is where we're going to get to the secret sauce. If you've watched one of my videos before, you know that I always try to hide the secret sauce at the end of the video so that all those other losers who turned off already don't get access to it. This is the secret tips just for you. So thank you for sticking with the video. I really appreciate it. Um, thank you so much uh, for, if you've, you know, watched this far, a video about painting a skeleton boy. So, 
Um, I Now what we're going to do is we're going to infuse more tones, more colors, more life, more warmth into here. Not a lot. I still want it to feel overall cold, but we need a little more life, which is ironic given he's a dead thing. But let's not worry about the contradictions. Let's plow ahead with making him look cool. So I begin with a little seraphim sepia. Now we're not going to wash the whole thing. Oh my goodness, no. After we've done this whole progression, we are not going to just get out our seraphim sepia and pfft, all over the model. No. Instead, what I do is I take some of the seraphim sepia and I use a moist brush that's got a decent amount of water in it. I dip it into the, uh, into the wash. Then I wick off a lot of that liquid into a paper towel and then apply it as a thin filter. A filter is just a very thin glaze. It's effectively sort of the thinnest glaze you can have that has any effect on the, the miniature. When you're filtering colors, you're not looking to hide any work or cover up anything below. Instead, you're looking to simply tint or um, slightly alter the tone, really, of the paint that's already there. Here I take the uh, sepia and again I sweep from the mid-tone into the shadows. Just very lightly working my way around the miniature, sweeping never in, the, never in the highlights. I don't want that brown tone in the highlights. It would be way too impactful. The thin filters are much more impactful on lighter colors. They're la much less impactful on darker colors. So I want to stay in the mid-tone down when I apply this. And what this does is, one, it'll hide a little bit of my sins as far as layer lines and stuff goes that weren't completely covered by the glaze. But two, it adds a little bit of punch. That like very nice sort of orangey brown that is Seraphim Sepia will just add a lot of interesting tone and warmth into the low tones of the skeleton. Okay, so with that glaze applied, We've got some nice color, but we're not done yet. Now comes the real, the real, real secret sauce. For those who stuck to this point, ha, we tricked you before. That was just secret step number one. Now we come to the real, real. Okay. So what I do here is I grab a little bit of uh, Cassandra yellow. Now this is ostensibly like a yellow wash. But again, if you don't have this exact thing, you can use any kind of really thin yellow, thin down. You could super thin down a yellow ink or yellow paint, but you got to go real super thin with it. Admittedly, this is great for this. You could also very much thin down like a yellow contrast paint or speed paint or anything like that. But I thin this way down. I actually bring it out on my palette and I mix this mm, at least one to one with water, probably a little more. And I then, again, test on the back of my hand wick off the excess liquid into a paper towel. And then here what I do is I start just off the highlight and sweep down into the shadow. So I'm starting much higher in my progression around the model and just lightly applying that yellow filter. Now this is not going to have a big effect. What it will feel like though is that our highlights, because of the way we mix the bright ivory with the, the green gray, stays really cold and sharp and intense and then as we pass just off the highlight into like our slightly lower values, we get this nice infusion of the yellow tone into the oranges of the sepia down into the red, gray. See how we did there? So yellow, orange, red, right? Ah, uh -huh. okay, we did a thing. And we get that beautiful, very light filter of progression down. And because we've now infused more colors, the red in the deep shadows, the orange through the sepia, the yellow just off the highlight, now we've got some actual hues kicking in here, and that just vastly increases the visual interest of what otherwise would be a very boring area of the model, the just white bone. So by doing this extreme progression of the red gray to the bright ivory, as you can see, we've uh, we've created really nice contrast, right? So there's a very much a focus here on the center of the model. But then in addition, we didn't stop there for visual interest. We then also injected that hue in there. So there was a lot of uh, color tonal variation as well. So by mixing the contrast of both uh, those, those interference colors, those pop colors of the final glazes, those filters, we get that visual interest to complement the contrast. So 
here's how he came out. Um, there's a couple more things I need to touch up on him as, as of the time I took this picture. Uh, you can see like the little gem on him isn't done, his base isn't done, stuff like that. But all in all, I'm really happy with how the bone came out. I think he looks really cool, very eye-catching, and I think this would be a really fun way to paint uh, an army. Again, you could cut out some of these steps or go a little farther if you know, if I were just, if I was doing Catacros or somebody like that, maybe I'd go even farther than that. But I hope this was helpful. Even if you don't want to use all of these steps for your own skeletons, I hope it gave you uh, some thoughts as to what you could do to make what oftentimes might be a simple color progression or something neutral, much more visually compelling and interesting and honestly fun to paint with your miniatures. If you liked this, give it a like, subscribe for additional hobby cheating. We've got new videos here every Saturday. If you've got any questions uh, about anything here or anything hobby related, drop those down in the comments below. I always read every comment and answer every question. If you want to support the channel, there's lots of ways you can do it. There's affiliate links down there for all sorts of products that you might need for your hobby. Doesn't cost you anything extra. In fact, it often saves you money. You need a new light, you need a new wet palette like you saw me using here, or anything you might need, you can find links for all that below. Um, it really helps support the channel and is deeply appreciated. Of course, there's also our Patreon focused on review and feedback and taking your next step on your hobby journey. So no matter what you're trying to paint, we'd love to have you as part of the community. As always, though, I thank you so much for watching this one, and we'll see you next time.